Welcome to What If, S Season 1, Episode 4, Thoughts, and this episode is called What If Doctor Strange Lost His Heart Instead of His Hands. Now, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, especially videos made by New Rockstar, Screen Rant, Nerdist, CBR, Screen Crush, Black Nerd Comedy, IGN, Heavy Spoilers, and Magic Maggie. So, if this is the first of these videos by me that you watch, then just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie, although I don't make any excuses for Iron Man 2, and I love every, every episode that's come out so far of the Disney Plus MCU shows, including this one. And... Honestly, you know, recently in these episodes, I talk about the pacing. And and recently I've just been saying, you know, are there, you know, yeah. Are there any slow pacing killing segments of the episode? Since, you know, personally, I love the pacing of WandaVision, but I am not going to claim that there aren't slow pacing killing segments of the you know Captain America and the Winter Soldier and season one of Loki but yeah the you know the first three episodes didn't have any slow segments this episode I really would say is completely perfectly paced like it, uh, yeah, this is probably the first episode of an MCU Disney Plus show where, like, it's never in too much of a hurry. It never slows down. Like, once you've watched it for the first time, remember how much, like, to take a step back and actually remember how many things happen in this episode that, like, are, th that have an emotional impact on you as a viewer. Like, it, uh, yeah. And I like that, you know, the, the, the watcher says, what if it's the wrong choice? Another super dark episode. Maybe the first two episodes are the only ones that won't be. As soon as Christine got in the car and Steven got behind the wheel. And then we see the shot of him driving down the dangerous road. The exact same one as in the film. Like, you know, the, the, when we just saw the title, it was like, what is what does that mean? Like, like Tony Stark in, in Afghanistan? Is that what they mean? I mean, would that really make that interesting? Or start? I don't know, you know, but Christine and, and yeah, the, the, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a really clever twist on, you know, one of the, one of the Easter egg people pointed out that in this episode, you know, in, in the movie, they're, like, basically, yeah, they, they, they've already broken up before the events of the movie, but they were together? I want to say, I feel like they used to be together, and then she got tired of his ego, so now they only work together. But in this episode, they are together. They, you know, they're, yeah, they're, they're very, she's very flirty with him and she's actually looking forward to the speech which you know in the movie she's specific like he's saying you know i'm going to i have a speaking engagement would you like to join me and she's like do you really i'm, I'm not saying this is ver word verbatim what she's saying anyway she's basically like you really think i want to sit still and listen to you meander about how amazing you are you know, no, no thanks. I have better things to do with my life. And and here, she's like, oh, you got to tell me. How's it, you know, and just, and she's so full of life. You know, it's such a, a tragedy. The, the, yeah. Let's see. And really, I mean, the car crash in the movie realistically would probably have killed him. So it's not a stretch that... Someone does die in this car crash. But yeah, the moment, you know, the moment I realized that the car crash, the, you know, this time around the car crash kills Christine, 
I knew he's not going to take it well. We get like one full second where we think maybe the car crash won't happen, but then they get hit by someone speeding from behind. Because the, the, if I recall in the movie, he like loses control and swerves. And in the, you know, in this episode, instead of swerving, he just changes lanes. And, and yeah. But then just someone comes speeding from behind and it is like, you know, it's it's a dark night. He, evidently, he's not the only one who likes driving really fast down this, you know, road, I guess. Not street. Anyway. And we get the... Ah, what's it called? We, we see the, the events of the movie happen. Dormammu looks incredible in this animation. I mean, I'm, you know, obviously he was already animated, but I'm saying the, the, yeah, the, he looks slightly different here and it's, yeah, it looks, it looks incredible. I'm going to put the kettle on. Subtle nod to the fact that in the comics, Wong poured tea for Strange. She didn't train him. Thank goodness they changed that for the MCU. That really... It's wild that back then they were like, let's not only have a white guy be the best at magic, even though he like learned it in the Kathmandu. No, let's also have this friend, you know, really polite Asian man be like, yeah. Anyway, like a servant. I, And we see Steven, like, you know, trying, yeah, trying various different things to, ah, what's it called? Yeah, to, to save her life. And it's really devastating when we see Christine die again. And Steven rewinds time, tries again taking a different route. He tries... You know, n not not going on the same way that the car crash happened, but the car crash just happens again. You know, he takes her to a restaurant. He takes her out for pizza. She dies. And he even stands her up once, but she she you know she dies in different ways. But she always dies. It's such a tragic episode. Good evening, Doctor Strange. Are you having car trouble? <laughs> Look, whitewashing aside she's still really great in, in this role, and I'm really glad we got, you know, this is the second time we've seen her. She, she did die in the solo movie, in Doctor Strange's solo movie, but they found ways to bring her back. You know, Endgame, and now this, and just, yeah. And... Yeah, she, she explains that Christine's death is an absolute point in time, unchangeable, unmovable. Now. Which is also a, a clever idea. We haven't heard about that in the MCU before this point. Nothing is impossible. You taught me that. That she did. That she did. The four major cast members in this episode all give really strong performances and, you know, as you might have guessed from just listening to the performances in this episode, that, yeah, the they did get the actual actors from the movies back and, let's see, the, the you know, at least one of the Easter egg people said, you know, maybe that means that, like, for example, I let's see. I think they call him Supreme Strange, might show up in one of the movies. You know, maybe they will be following up on some of this episode in Doctor Strange 2. And that's, you know, that's why they got Rachel McAdams back for a fairly, like, she gives a good performance, but, like, she's basically there to be full of life and then be, like, scared of him and then like 
you know, and, and then, yeah, say, what did you do there at the end? You know, it's, there's, there's not, it, it could seem like a very thankless role, but if it's going to tie into the movie, then it makes sense that they would get the, the actual actors back. Now, and I was actually, you know, I, I, I wonder if maybe each time one of the actors in this episode interacts with another of the actors, th maybe both of them were in the studio at the same time. I'm not saying that they got all four of them in the, you know, sound recording studio at the exact same time, but, you know, they planned recording the, the lines where they're interacting with each other for, for that, and... Because cause that is, you know, that, that could help explain why some of the performances are a little off for, you know, the, the fact that it's a sound recording studio when these are actors who are used to live action. And, you know, if you can't actually, like, it's just, it, it, it it's a more natural performance if you can see the person that you're supposed to be interacting with now let's see now yeah and strange meets i've i have to uh let's see kelly kelly ostro was that who yeah I, th I think you know there's a theory that that really is kelly ostro because the name he gives was it oh oh bang or, or something like that is apparently supposedly the actual name of the yeah i i don't know a lot about him and but you know there i already mentioned i recommend the videos made by the other people who talk about these but yeah you know strange meets him and then he just starts walking off and strange is like hey i'm talking here and Strange gets rid of the one rune, but he walks right into the other ones. And, you know, the Easter egg people pointed out, this is, you know, runes ar around a specific place having an, an effect on, you know, stuff that happens there and such. That is very much like in WandaVision, both Wanda's and Agatha's. And, yeah, the... the that that is a, a cool you know we we gradually we get to know more about how things work in the MCU and these things get brought back okay you're cryptic please tell me you're not Kelly Astro ah you think he went to the Yoda school of being cryptic before revealing yourself to be a great mentor I'd like to think I would have written that joke, even if I wasn't also recording a video talking about Empire Strikes Back today. Follow me, Sorcerer Armani. Actually, it's strange. No stranger than any other name in this world. I really hope they keep making fun of his name in every single MCU appearance. It is wild to me that they didn't change it from the comics for the MCU. If his given name was Strange, he would legally change it out of arrogance. Obviously, I get the appeal of a character being referred to as Doctor Strange. He is an expert in the strange. But long before Stephen went through med school, he would have stopped and thought, if I become a doctor and I do not change my name, people will refer to me as Doctor Strange. And if you are not a master of the mystic arts or like a hardcore, hardcore comic book fan, you do not want people referring to you as Doctor Strange. And Strange summoned a huge squid creature, and, you know, that might be the same one as in episode one. Now, and, yeah, we see Strange summoning and absorbing a bunch of creatures. Nice cape, but I draw the lines at bugs. I draw the line at bugs. So the, this guy bugging you? And the Watcher points out Strange wouldn't listen to him. Good character moment. Many of those in this episode, as with the first three. I really liked the... Ah, what's it called? 
the the montage of Strange absorbing the powers of all these powerful magical creatures and how clear it is that this is really dark magic. You know, he's not like summoning let's see, elves and it just occurred to me I don't actually often unicorns, you know, stuff stuff like that. No, he's summoning these demonic things. Time to meet an old friend. Hello and goodbye. Excellent way to convey that he spent an extreme amount of time gathering power with the establishing shot of the, the outside kind of aging, all, all the green, you know, plant stuff. For, for a while it's there and it, it diminishes and, and eventually it's just gone because, you know, it goes, yeah, it ages and dies. And, and the thing about how, you know, it turns out Cagliostro also, you know, slowed down his aging process just like the ancient one did. And Strange finally goes back to the world, finds that he's done serious damage to it. A psychic impression sent through Splinter in reality. That is 100% word for word what Strange was going to say. You cannot save her, Stephen. Even now, she still does empathize, but she realizes it's dangerous. It's hard to overstate how excellent of an actress she is, but that's not exactly news, is it? I guess I'm just saying I'm really glad we keep getting to see that. And... I like that, you know, I, th I think Wong asks Doctor Strange, how are you going to find him? And then, you know, the floor, and he's like, looks like he's found me. And, yeah, Strange Supreme is summoned, or rather, summons Doctor Strange. And for the second time in this episode, Strange, due to magic, folds through the floor. This is arrogance. It's our need to F everything. Epic and emotional duel between the two Doctor Stranges. Strange Supreme tries to trick Doctor Strange posing as Christine. And Strange Supreme managed to save Christine, but she flees from his monstrous form and then starts coming apart, just like we saw Wong and others do. Please fix this the way you fixed Christine. The world shouldn't pay for my arrogance. I'm not a god, and neither are you. I get the sense that later the Watcher will be compelled to change things, maybe to stop one or more kings. And Christine disappears just like the rest of Strange's universe, of Strange Supreme's universe. And as she disappears, she says the absolutely devastating words: "What did you do?" And they're all the more devastating because. She's absolutely right. He did do this. He didn't mean to, but he did it. You know, I, th I think it's the Watcher who points out, you were warned. And according to the end credits, in addition to the four major cast members repri reprising their roles, they even brought back Leslie Bibb as Christine Everhart, first seen in the original Iron Man, the reporter. I guess it was, her yeah, I yeah, my guess was, that, and, and some of the Easter egg people pointed out, or confirmed, you know, that was her reporting on Christine's death. I guess there's some chance that in this universe, she's entirely devoted to reporting when something bad happens to her namesakes. One of the reasons that this episode is so great is that it understands that when we watch a story like this with tons of magic and such, we don't only want to see cool magic stuff. We do also really want to see an emotional core. Like, when Strange keeps rewinding time trying to save Christine, when he's absorbing evil creatures, and the incredible duel between the two Doctor Strange versions, every step of the way, Strange Supreme is doing it to save Christine, and he legitimately thinks that he can. 
you know, he doesn't realize that he's making things worse. And yeah, you know, that like, you know, if you want to test it, if if you know someone that hasn't watched the episode, try to just show them the scene of, you know, for example, the all the absorbing, which even by itself would it it looks cool, you know. But if you don't know the emotional, yeah, if, without the the context, it's nowhere near as powerful. I would imagine. I haven't watched it without that context. I'm not claiming the MCU overall is flawless or that the stories always hit super hard. And I swear I'm not saying, saying the following lightly, but this is one of the most compelling stories I've ever seen in a visual medium. It's up there with the very best of Star Trek. I'm really impressed with how unlike a lot of the MCU this episode is, and yet it does still fit with the overall aesthetic. This is how you keep things interesting with a shared continuity. I love that this episode came out so soon after the Spider-Man Spider -Man No Way Home trailer. I mean, obviously Marvel Studios wants us to notice these similarities. The way that in this episode, Wong tells Strange not to do something stupid with magic, exactly like he does in that trailer, which obviously makes us wonder, is the spell going to go as bad in that movie as it did in this episode? And like, you know, we, we know, based on the trailer, it certainly looks like it's going to go bad, but, you know, I mean, I'm not saying, I don't, I don't think that that movie is going to end with, like, the, you know, a, the, the main MCU universe destroyed. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, you know, maybe they accidentally start something really bad like that and have to do something really dramatic to stop it. Now, Heavy Spoilers points out that the episode is in part about Stephen Mourning. He goes through all five stages of grief. There's not a single character in this that gives, or, yeah, actor that gives a broad performance, so it's possible they just had to get that out of their systems with the first three episodes. It's also possible that later episodes will have it, but, yeah, I'm just, I'm really glad that it's not in this episode. Like, through and through. There's no broad care broad performance and you know by episode three it was only the the there there wasn't that much of it but it yeah and I think that is absolutely everything that I wanted to say so so yeah I I would like to see more of well yeah, I already mentioned that I might be spoiling upcoming episodes, the theories. Some of the Easter egg people have pointed out that the 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 trailers for What If show Strange Supreme in like later, you know, there's at least one more episode, at least one more episode that he's going to appear in, and he's going to be like part of a you know, not Avengers, but a team. Not, or not necessarily an Avengers team, but a a team. And uh, let's see, there was a specific right. I yeah, that does of course bring up. Does that cheapen the impact of this episode? If we know that he's still he's going to show up, and it definitely it is a very MCU thing to have a really dramatic traumatic tragic opening story and then have the character be brought back and like i really i hope that they don't have broad performances in that episode. i i especially hope that strange supreme doesn't get turned into a, a joke you know i already mentioned that in black widow the the solo movie i wasn't i i, I thought that they could have dialed back you know, Red Guardian being a, a joke, just a, a little bit. It doesn't bother me that a man is a, you know, is is the butt of so many jokes in a female-led, female-centric movie. That's fine. We need more female-led, female-centric movies. And, you know, if it happens to be that some of them will be critical of of men, that's fine. But 
it didn't need to, I, I feel like they just 20 or 30 percent less jokes with him or or maybe stuff where it's jokes but he's not the he's not the one we're laughing at i i guess is like yeah you know anyway yeah i really hope that strange supreme doesn't is is in no way there's that there are no jokes surrounding him in the the episode where he shows up but i don't think that it takes away from the tragedy of this episode to know that he's showing up again later because ultimately he did still ruin one universe and he still lost christine in more ways than one you know it, if he if he had accepted that christine died and he couldn't do anything about that if he had accepted that at the start of the episode his universe would have been fine but because he refused to accept that he ended up destroying destroying the universe and when she realized that he was just you know that the universe was being destroyed and that he had you know yeah kind of become a monster yeah, you know, she she's shocked. And yeah, I I you know, so some of the historic people pointed out it's not exactly subtle the fact that he takes on the forms of some of the creatures that he absorbs. That they I, they weren't really saying it was a bad thing that it wasn't subtle, but yeah, I I really I think it's a strength of the episode that it's as unsubtle as it is because it's it it's one of those things where actually yeah I, I want to briefly address because that's relevant for this one of the Easter egg people said that they felt like they couldn't really relate to the story because you know it's it's let's see they I think they said that Obviously, the idea is supposed to be that Strange is an arrogant man who refuses to let something, you know, to accept that he can't fix everything. But they felt that it was ultimately, you know, it, it, the, the whole magic thing was a little too hard to relate to for them. And, I mean, I think the way I see it, you could... Like, in in real life, sometimes, you know, you might find that someone you really care about, you know, pulls away from, from you or someone else that you care about. And, it, you know, sometimes the, the right thing to do in that situation is to accept that that person is pulling away and just move on and the the yeah the, the way that that's like this episode is you know if dr strange was in that situation he would keep fighting to keep that person in their life and eventually that that other person would say would, would like start hating him because they aren't being given the space that they're asking for you know i i I agree that the specifics are hard to relate to for us mere mortals, but I don't think that the the episode is hard to relate to. You just gotta, you know, think of a an equivalent. But but yeah, absolutely love this episode. It's it's incredible. Like again, I'm not like the MCU is not the most artistic thing that we've ever made you know there's definitely some some you know they want us to keep watching so they don't take as big chances as, as big risks as some others but this really is this this episode is is one of the best things and and really i mean this is an episode you could show this to some the only thing you need to know before you watch this episode is Doctor Strange. You know, you, you watch the solo movie and then watch this episode. That's 
that's everything. You you don't need to know. Any, you don't need to watch the first three episodes in order to. So yeah, I I really hope they can keep. You know yeah with episodes like this like if you removed the the yeah if you changed the name the names and yeah like you you wouldn't have to change very much for this episode to be very unlike the rest of the MCU and the fact that they managed to make it fit is really impressive and I'm really glad that they're telling stories as as dark as this this really like this is incredibly far away from you know the the mcu kind of ah, what's the word i mean this is the single most tragic for for a main character i mean i for sure there are other characters who've gone through a great tragedy you know like gamora and nebula for example but the 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 fact that the story ends with the the complete destruction of the of the universe with strange with supreme strange losing everything like yeah we haven't had one of the movies or another you know one of the Disney Plus MCU shows actually have a, a story that with with such a, a tragic ending so so yeah i really appreciate that i really i hope that we'll get more of the i wouldn't mind more like episode two episode three or even really episode one i, th I think if they do another thing that's like episode one i think they just need to change a little bit more that would but once again it's still a really fun episode but yeah, this is another level. I really hope this. Yeah, this this. I would not have thought that they would do something this bleak. So yeah, that's it for this one. So I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoy watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.